Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the Hunter Winaline Hawkeye Elite alignment system and some of the proper techniques to use this equipment. First we'll show you how to position a vehicle on the lift rack and we'll show you how to stage the vehicle correctly for a forward roll compensation. Next we'll show you how to place the wheel targets onto the wheels so they are snug and flush up against the wheels. Then we'll show you how to identify the vehicle in the Winaline software so we can pull the correct alignment specs for our vehicle. After that, we'll show you some of the helpful tools and kits that are built into the Winaline alignment program that'll make your job as an alignment technician more efficient and more effective. Let's get started. So the first step in the process is we need to position the vehicle on the lift rack for our quick comp roll forward compensation. So what we'll do first is we'll actually position the vehicle to where the leading edge of the tire is lined up with the center bolt on the turn plate. So I've already placed the vehicle in neutral so I can go ahead and just roll it forward and get that lined up. So we'll give the vehicle a slight push until we get lined up. I'll go ahead and chalk the wheels. And then the next thing I need to do is actually position the turn plates so that they're centered on the tire. We'll go ahead and do that as well. And check both sides. Okay, and once those are properly positioned, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. So the next step in our procedure is we need to compensate the vehicle to get our alignment readings. So to do that, we'll go to the rear tire of the vehicle and we'll push on the top of the tire to roll the vehicle forward onto the turn plates. So a few things we don't want to do with this procedure. We don't want to drive the vehicle forward by sitting in the driver's seat and starting the engine. We don't want to have anybody in the vehicle while we roll the vehicle forward. We also don't want to push or pull from the front or rear bumper or any of the body panels of the vehicle to roll the vehicle forward and compensate our targets. Doing any of these actions runs the risk of producing very inaccurate alignment readings. So remember, the correct way that we're going to roll the vehicle forward to compensate our targets is by pushing on the top of one of the rear tires of the vehicle. So we've just mounted our targets. There's a couple of things we want to keep in mind when doing so. First, we want to make sure that the target is snug up against the face of the wheel. So to do that, we're going to make sure we use our tire hooks and have those deeply engaged with the treads on the sides of the tire. So we'll also use our ratchet mechanism on the side of the target to make sure that that target is firmly engaged with the side of the wheel. Second, we want to be relatively center with our target placement, but we don't have to be perfect. That's one nice advantage of these targets is we can be a little off center and it won't affect performance. Okay, so now that we have our targets on the wheels, we can go ahead and compensate our vehicle. So the aligner has recognized that I placed all four targets on the car and it has automatically brought up our compensation screen. So I have my bar graphs up on screen to kind of tell me how far I need to roll the vehicle forward. So remember, to roll the vehicle forward, we're gonna push from the top of the rear tire here, and we're not gonna push or pull from the fender or the uh, side panels of the vehicle. So we'll pull our front wheel chalk out, place that aside. We'll go ahead and give the vehicle a push. I'm gonna look at my bar graphs up on the screen, get those into the green, into the center part of the bar graph. And I'll hold. And once the aligner has released the, uh, the locks on the turn plates and the slip plates, I can go ahead and replace my wheel chocks. And this front one, I'm gonna set a little bit off to the side so I don't interfere with the hook here on the target. So another point of note is when we're rolling the vehicle forward, we also don't wanna roll so far that we're actually going to roll up onto the hooks onto the targets doing so may result in inaccurate compensation and thus inaccurate readings. So now that we've compensated the vehicle, the next thing we need to do in the process is select the vehicle that we're working on so the aligner can pull forward the proper alignment specs. So to do that, we're gonna use our handheld barcode scanner. So we're gonna go scan the VIN on the vehicle to identify year, make, and model. So let's do that. Okay, so we'll take our barcode scanner, we'll come over here to the door, and we're gonna go to our VIN tag down here at the bottom, and we're gonna scan that barcode. And that's going to automatically pull up the alignment specs on the aligner. Okay, so you just saw me select the vehicle using the handheld barcode scanner. It's a very quick and efficient way of identifying the vehicle that we have on the lift. 
So another option we have is to use the spec database here in the aligner where we kind of punch in the vehicle manually. So let's do that. So we're working on a Ford. So we can scroll down to Ford in the first list here. And then we'll scroll down to Explore, which is also what we're working on. And this is brand new. So this is a, a 20 to 2021 Ford Explorer. So we'll go ahead and select that. This one is an all wheel drive and it's not the police interceptor. So by doing that, I've actually told the aligner what we're working on and it pulls up the proper specifications for the alignment. So let's talk about navigating through the software on the aligner and some of the basic controls for using the alignment software. So with the Hunter aligner, we have what's called K keys. So we have K1, K2, K3, and K4 that are gonna allow us to navigate the software. So each of the keys actually correspond to one of the soft keys at the bottom of the screen here. So we have K1 here on all the way on the left, K2 here in the left middle, K3 right middle, and K4 on the far right. So using the K keys, we can navigate through the software pretty efficiently. So we can use K4 to select whatever is highlighted in blue. So in this case, it's Acura. Um, we won't select that since we wanna make sure we're selecting the right vehicle that we have on the rack. Um, but next to those K keys, we also have some up and down arrows that allow us to shift the soft menu down here at the bottom, as well as a spyglass key that allows us to blow up that entire menu so we can look at all of our soft key options. So we also have a left and right arrow to advance screens as well. So let's talk about resetting the aligner. So one of the key things is knowing how to reset the program once we're finished with an alignment. So to do that, we can hit the R key or the escape key on the keyboard and that's gonna bring up the option of, do you wanna reset? And we have the option of hitting K1 all the way here on the left, or K4 all the way on the right for yes and no. So to reset the aligner, we'll hit K1, tell it yes, we do wanna reset, and that's gonna take us back to the home screen. So now that we've identified the vehicle, one of the first screens that pops up on the aligner is what we call a warning screen. So warning screens call attention to any pre or post procedures that I need to pay attention to in regards to the alignment. In this case, it's a post warning screen that's calling attention to a process for resetting the Lane Keep Assist system on this Ford Explorer. So once I've carefully read through the warning screen and have decided that I have all the proper tooling to complete this procedure, I can go ahead and advance to the next part of the alignment. So in this case, we'll hit K4, and it's gonna advance us to our caster measurement. So let's go do that. Okay, so to measure our caster, we'll come up here to the vehicle, to the driver's side. We'll go ahead and grab the steering wheel and we're gonna steer left until our bar graphs turn green. And then we'll steer back right to the green. And then we'll steer back center. Now that we've measured our caster, the aligner is gonna bring us up to the measurement screen here. We have all of our alignment measurements up on screen and I can make the determination as to what needs to be performed on this vehicle to get everything going nice and straight down the road. So let's show you a couple different things that we have available to help guide the process a little bit. So let's say for instance, I wanna adjust the rear camber on this vehicle. So one of the options I have to make this process a little bit easier is what's called illustrate adjustments. So to reach that, I can go to my little bar graph here and click on the icon next to it and a drop menu will pop up. And the third option down is Illustrate Adjustments. We'll click on that. and actually brings up a picture of the rear camber adjustment on a Ford Explorer for this make and model year. It gives me some instructions on how to actually make that adjustment. We have the option to print out that illustration if I want to take it uh, over to the, uh, the rear part of the rack. And I have some other options as far as showing the tools and kits that are going to be needed for making this adjustment. I can even change the text color by hitting K3. So another option we have is video adjustments. So let's say I want to adjust the front toe on this Ford Explorer. So same thing, I can go up to my icon here next to front toe. I can click on my drop menu. And the fourth option down is actually video adjustments. And this will pull up a video of how to adjust the toe. On most rack and pinion steering systems, Individual toe adjustments are provided at each tie rod assembly. So on top of the video adjustments, we also have animation adjustments. 
So same thing, we can go to my icon here, up in the top corner, and the fifth option down is animation adjustments. And this will give me an animation on how to actually adjust the tie rod on the front end of this vehicle. These are fairly generic, but they are very helpful for newer technicians. So on top of all the guided adjustments, as far as the videos, the animations, and all the pictures we have, we also have a option called tools and kits that's actually going to allow you to pull out any of the tools that are gonna be required for that adjustment and call out any aftermarket kits that may be available for making those adjustments. Let's show you that. Okay, so to get into our tools and kits program, we'll go to our front toe measurement here, or really any of the angles that we wanna see the tools and kits for, and we'll click on our icon next to the numbers. And the sixth option down is tools and kits. So we'll select that, and it's gonna open that tools and kits program. In this case, since we went through that front toe measurement screen, it gives us our tools that we need for adjusting the front toe on this Ford Explorer. So in this case, we need a 21 millimeter wrench, a 13 millimeter wrench, and a pair of pliers. So from this screen, I also have the option of changing which angles I'm looking at. So I can go to my top right corner here to the drop down menu, and I can select really any of the angles I want on this vehicle. So let's go look at front camber. So for making a front camber adjustment on this Ford Explorer, we need a 22 millimeter wrench, a 24 millimeter socket, and a ratchet. Okay, I also have the option of blowing out all of the tools I need for any of the adjustable angles on this vehicle. So same thing, we can go to my drop down menu and we can go down to all angles and this will bring out all the tools I need to make adjustments on any of the angles on this vehicle, as well as any of the rear aftermarket kits I may need for adjusting, in this case, rear camber. So I also have the option of printing this out. So if I have to go to a community toolbox and grab all my tools in one run, I can take that tools list with me or that parts list with me and I can get everything I need in a very short amount of time. So we've seen our video adjustments, our video animations, our tools and kits program. There's one last program we wanna to talk to you about and that's our align guide program. So align guide is gonna be very specific to the alignment procedure. It's very easy to get to this align guide program as well. So up here on screen, if we go to the top right hand corner, we'll see a little video camera with a blue question mark under it, and you'll see it call out a line guide training and information next to it when we hover the mouse over that icon. So if we click on that icon, this is actually going to bring up a lot of helpful videos uh, that are going to be specific to the screen that we are on within the WinAlign software. So in this case, with us being on the show measurement screen, it's gonna bring forward a lot of operations focused videos. So how to use the soft keys on the aligner, what setback and offset measurements are, resetting the aligner, um, and many more. As well as a lot of alignment fundamentals videos as far as what dog tracking is, how to center the steering wheel, uh, what a caster pull is, what a camber pull is, and what causes those issues. So that's the WinAlign Hawkeye Elite system. So we showed you how to pull a vehicle onto the lift rack and stage it correctly for forward roll compensation. We showed you how to mount the wheel targets to the wheel so they were firm and secure. We also showed you how to identify the vehicle in the WinAlign software to get the correct alignment specifications for our vehicle. And we hit on some of the helpful topics that are built in the WinAlign system, such as tools and kits and video adjustments that make your job as an alignment technician easier. For information on this product, as well as all of our Hunter products, visit our website, hunter.com. Thanks for watching.